On the oil front, I would say we've done a pretty good job since really the beginning of the year in explaining why oil has a downside bias. We will always consider those geopolitical risks um, to drive speculation and prices higher. And we, we drew out this weekly bar for you to consider that from a technical perspective, you do have a, a downward sloping parallel um, range that is valid. Thus, 83, 84 resistance is valid. And that's a lot for a day trade. So again, macro views aren't going to necessarily secure perfection here, but bottom up view, right? Um, so with that said, after the sort of monthly opening range on the Z contract or on the, um, yeah, the Z contract that hit those sub 74s, as we, as we've known, and as we've mentioned that forward curve has been in a backwardation now for some time. So of course the price on the deck November is, excuse me, October is deeper with 71s being ticked. So what I'm saying as well here is that WTI is not only declining due to its um, fundamental, you know, I told you record record supply out there in the United States for the first time in history, et cetera, et cetera. It's also because of the role. So contracts are moving into this November. Also, Consider anybody who is speculating for the upside oil move on the back of geopolitical risks, i.e. Israel and Iran, what has happened? There is a supposed ceasefire, right? So it's so funny how you look at the financial media three weeks after the discussion that we had about perhaps this speculation being a bit irrational and illogical considering the supply and demand story, and yet it takes three plus weeks for the, the financial media to acknowledge it. Well, there you go. So again, price discounts, everything. I will note from a tactical intraday perspective, we are in the midst of engaging with a velocity gap from the 9th of August. The fact that this gap was very low volatility thus far does give reason to monitor it closely because we already did one velocity gap. So it's either trend like continuation with collision of value, previous value into the close, which is in two hours or a rejection of selling and an, a lack of reason. And don't forget tomorrow is uh, EIA and tonight API. Um, and then the market retraces on the back of uh, no change, or perhaps maybe some speculation uh, that oil could blip on some kind of concern with the Middle East or even OPEC. Because on my radar, folks, um, and just to remind you all, the Twitter or the X. Um, oil deck has been buzzing with geo or some just some risks that I think are worth noting. Um, what is this deck? That's my purple deck. Okay. So yeah, you know these uh, if you've watched me for a while, but you're free to mark some down if you need. But anyway, Amina was just mentioning and reminding, and obviously Amina is always the one um, that kind of accelerates the perception of the grand market because everybody knows her, right? Uh, let me just move this out of your way. She was just mentioning that um, the conditions for the OPEC plus cartel to start easing those production cuts is still in play. So yeah, there's, I think there's more headwinds for oil and we just want to be mindful um noting that the uh gas prices as well so yeah just look fundamentally you're you're leaning on this thing to likely trend lower but remember that it rotates 
in sequence. So if you're an oil trader, it's best to just really stay technical, honestly. Easy as that. Um, and just be be ready for storms and waves. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, big, big kind of immediate thing there, though, is that velocity gap that we're reckoning with now between 73.22 and 72.88. I will say from a profile perspective, we've done a considerable one time framing. So that does give room to a potential arbitrary uh, blip higher again on the back of some kind of geopolitical um, like thing. So just to remind you all, we've gotten a series of headlines today out of the Iran uh, military regarding this sort of rhetoric that says, although the US and, and Israel are ready for a ceasefire, Iran is not necessarily uh, inclined to do so and that that Hezbollah can still attack and that quote unquote, the expected retaliation for the killing of their um, military commander could still happen in the long term. Basically, just ensuring that that everyone is still on top, kind of on their um, toes about it. 